Hi everyone, I'm Claire and I'm the Patient and Family Engagement Manager at Anthony Nolan. For this Share and Support vlog series, today's vlog, I'm joined by our very own Haley Leonard, who's Anthony Nolan's lead nurse. Um, Haley is sadly leaving us at the end of the month, so at the end of April. So the purpose of this vlog is for Haley and I to have a chat about her time at Anthony Nolan and about her experience as our first ever clinical nurse specialist and as our first ever lead nurse in Anthony Nolan. Haley has worked in stem cell transplant for nearly 20 years, so there is a lot to learn from her and I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So Haley, it is great to see you. How are you doing? Oh, good, thank you. I'm excited. So we've had nearly 20 years in transplant, but seven years ago, you started working with Anthony Nolan. So let's start from the start. What was it like to be Anthony Nolan's very first clinical nurse specialist? Um, well, I'd, I'd been a transplant coordinator for a number of years prior to that. And um, I was quite frustrated at the lack of support that our patients were receiving after transplant. So um, I used to go on about it a lot of work and, you know, it was really difficult to watch patients struggle the way they were. Um, and uh, when this came up, that there was an opportunity to work with Anthony Nolan and to, uh, you know, be a post-transplant clinical specialist, it was my dream job. You know, it was the one thing that I, I'd always wanted to do. Um, and I was absolutely over the moon uh, and delighted to be not, not even, I didn't even quite realise, I don't think at the time, the significance of being the first. Yeah. I just wanted to be a post-transplant CNS and working with Anthony Nolan was a great opportunity. I'd obviously work with them in my coordinator role and they were always brilliant to work with. Um, I'd been to the offices a few times and there was a great vibe and everyone was really friendly. So the whole thing was really exciting. Um, and, you know, it was a great, it was a great opportunity. And, and, and um, I very quickly met the second and third CNSs that came into post a few months after me. I think within six months, there was about three of us. And it was really nice for all three of us to work together, develop the roles, um, you know, uh, and really start to build that, um, those relationships and the, and the, you know, the services for our patients. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I um, it was a great job and I loved it. I loved working with the patients. I loved doing that job and being with them on their recovery, you know, right into late effects. Um, it's an incredibly challenging time. We know that we talk about it all the time. Um, so I felt quite privileged to be in a position where I could help and, um, you know, really start to begin because it's a brand new role, you're also in a quite a nice decision that you can, you can make the job your own and you can start to put in the pathways that you need um, and have that kind of uh, freedom with the role. So that was brilliant. Um, and, uh, you know, I love doing it. Incredible, incredible. And as well as that, you know, Hilly, from working in transplant for quite a while and then coming into the Anthony Nolan, you kind of were able to bring that expertise as well to patient services, which was quite, you know, young in its existence as well and sort of okay, what is it like? And then, you know, those other two nurses as well start to develop that network amongst the, yeah, the transplant space. So yeah, yeah. it's just incredible that not then you became Anthony Nolan's first lead nurse. So when was that and how was that experience? So that was towards the end. So, so as in the end of the funded post, the, so the roles are funded for three years and then the whole point is the trust then takes on that funding. Um, so it was towards the end of that, but, you know, we knew the funding was going to be taken over at the Royal Marsden, so that was excellent. That was the ultimate objective of the role, that it would stay. It was never about me, it's about the role. Yeah. Um, and then the opportunity came to come and work at Auntie Nolan, and, and really in the three years that I was in the post, I'd worked more closely with them. I'd been to some events with some of the team, you know, I met Kiara a few times and always really enjoyed working with Kiara. Again, it was a bit of a no-brainer for me in some ways, although it was a very difficult decision because I've, I'd only ever worked in hospitals since I was 16 yeah, so to come away from the NHS and that clinical environment was a was a big change and and it did require some thought from that perspective but the opportunity to work in in the team you know I'd met members of the team and they were brilliant um, and the opportunity to really develop the services nationally that's that was very much how I saw it was you know I'd always very much at the Royal Marsden and we were very much Marsden focused there was this huge opportunity now to step back and work with lots of different nurses and healthcare professionals around the country to develop their services, to learn from one another, to grow the funded program yeah. um, and the education stuff that we've developed and, and all of those uh, opportunities. 
So it was again, it was it, as much as the CNS role was a bit of a no-brainer at that time in my career, when this then came around, for me it felt like absolutely the right thing to do. Although very difficult, it was still the right thing to do. And um, you know, I don't regret it for a second. Um I've loved working at Anti Nolan. It's an, it's a wonderful organization. Um everybody's brilliant, uh, the whole team. And I know, Healy, you know, even from the patient's perspective, like you're quite iconic for us in terms of, you know, you are kind of, your, well, if you go on our website, you have featured, you know, different in terms of being our very first Anthony you know, clinical nurse specialist and then building that up to the fact that then you were the lead nurse and you were sort of overseeing what the clinical nurse specialist programs looked like across the country. And it has only grown, you know, from strength to strength thanks to your expertise and your leadership. I would love to ask though, what has been your highlight? Has there been a certain, you know, favorite moment from when you were a CNS right through to when you've been a, a lead nurse that you're proud of or sticks out for you? I think in terms of something that I'm, I'm proud of, yeah. um, I'm, I'm very proud of um, the funded program. And I'm very proud of the way that it's developed over, obviously, it didn't come, didn't start with me. You know, the inception came from Chiara and the team and Auntie Nolan, they started it. Um, and obviously I was lucky to be involved with it from the beginning. Um, but I'm, I, I am very proud of how we've grown that program, how we now have, you know, um, nurses in lots of transplant centres uh, in those post-transplant roles. We've got psychologists in transplant centres, we're working with adults, working with paediatrics. Yeah. Um, and, and really, the whole point of it is that we fund it for three years, but then it carries on after the three years. That's that's the key. There's no point doing this for three years and it not working after that. Yeah. Um, and in all of the roles that you know I've been involved with, that's happened. Um, mm -hmm. There's even one role, um, which was before I started, that hasn't. And that was, to be fair, a bit out of our hands. You know, that was something that yeah. the learning experience from the very, very beginning of the program. So yeah. this has been a hugely successful program and I'm very proud of that. And I think the difference it's made to patients uh, and their experience and their quality of life is, is you know, incredible. And, and I know that from being a CNS. I know the difference it makes having that key worker. Yeah. And everything we do is about the patient. Every, um, you know, everything, that, the whole point of it is that we want to improve their quality of life and, and have a real positive influence on it. And I think these roles do that. So I am proud of that and how it's grown and where it's at right now, you know, for the new lead nurse to come in and, and pick it up. There's lots of room to, to grow and develop it further. So um yeah I, i'm very proud of that um and in terms of memories i mean I, I, it's tricky because have, i've only been you know at anti nolan as the lead nurse for four years but i actually feel like i've been here forever you know in a really good way i don't mean that in a bad way i mean in a really good way yeah i feel you know as much as um i feel very sad about leaving you know it's a like i've said it's a great place to work i've had so many opportunities i think Things like being able to go to family camp, yeah. being able to go to like, British Times. I've been to Westminster. I've um, you know, attended loads of brilliant things that I would never have had the opportunity to be involved with. I think working with the policy and public affairs team, for example, has been you know, hugely, something I've never been exposed to in the NHS and I've learned masses from them. So all, all of that really, so it's hard to say one moment. It's kind of, it, it probably sounds a bit cringy to say everything, but my whole experience has been really kind of very positive and really happy. So it's hard to pick one moment. That's incredible, Healy. And what have you learned throughout your time working in transplant? One of the main things would be that um, when, when I was a newly qualified junior nurse on the wards uh, 20 years ago, the focus very much at the time was getting through the transplant. Yeah. And um, a great deal of thought given to the long-term effects necessarily, or, you know, what we talk about now in survivorship and quality of life and, and living with some of the side effects of transplant or, or even the people that recover, you know, how they then get back to, you know, normal life or what they see as normal life. And, and fortunately, and, you know, this is actually as it should be, we are now, we're now much more focused on that. So we're, we're much more focused on survivorship. We're much more focused on ensuring people have that quality of life. It's not just about getting through the transplant. It's about the, the pre-transplant. There's a lot of talk about prehab. You know, that's huge at the moment and very much, I, you know, I think as an organisation, we're getting going to get more involved with that. Yeah. So that it's getting ready for transplant, the transplant itself, and then the recovery, and then the long-term 
um, quality of life and survivorship. And, um, you know, that, that's a very positive move forward. You know, that, that, that's really uh, very important for our patients. Um, and to be able to have, and again, all of our psychologists and our nurses and the people that we work with, that's their job. You know, that's what they do. They, they follow people up right into state effects or even further on as, as long as they're needed. They're, they're there, which is why their roles are so important. Yeah. Um, I guess the other thing as well is, um, you know, a lot of the drugs that we use, the chemotherapies and everything, they've actually are, are less toxic. The way we manage a lot of the side effects have, have really improved in the 20 years, which are really, really important know that and, and see that actually we can manage things we have ambulatory pe- pe- transplants now you know you can have transplant as an outpatient yeah. you know part of it or in some cases you can have as an outpatient now that's that's huge changes and again so much better for patients so much better for their quality of life to be able to stay out of hospital we want to keep patients out for as long as possible um so they're all very positive changes in that sense and then i guess if this isn't really a change but i think this is something that i've noticed throughout the whole um the whole time really is that uh, the dedication of, of the nurses and the healthcare pressure, healthcare professional, not just nurses, that work in transplant. It's a really difficult area to work in, it's incredibly challenging. Um, and the dedication uh, all the time, but again throughout COVID as well, doesn't really surprise me because it, I get it, but it inspires me, you know, and they are they keep going and um, they will do anything for their patients. And um, you know, I feel I've said it before, um, I actually feel quite privileged to have worked with such dedicated people, healthcare professionals. And that isn't just our anti Nolan nurses, that's the, you know, the networks that we've built in the last um, four years. It's amazing though, as you say, it's like what we talk about in patient service as a team around that sort of before, during and after. And it's quite, it's quite you mm. know, interesting to hear from you who has been nearly in this for 20 years and how we've you know, got a clinical nurse specialist kind of network. And as you say, though, that's still interacting with other nurses working in hematology who across the country, you know, in the UK are supporting those patients through transplant you know before or after and it's just incredible to hear like as you say the the outcome focus now it's about quality of life it's not just getting your transplant and there's sort of like a drop off it's more so okay every healthcare professional who's involved here has the one common goal of making sure the patient is best supported and has the best possible outcome in terms of quality of life as as can be in terms of patients, I'm sure there are many who will be watching this and, you know, fascinated by all your all your expertise over the years, Healy. Would you have any advice for patients who go through transplants or are going through the process at the minute? Um, well, I guess I guess the one thing I would say uh, I used to say to all of the patients when I met them at the Marsden was take it a stage at a time. You know, in terms of your in terms of the build up and, and, and the transplant and the recovery it is a a step-by-step process. We can overwhelm you with information. It can be too much at times. Um, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Um, you know, the recovery and, and the, you know, the long-term recovery can take time. And there will be times when you feel like you're not making progress, but you absolutely are. But they are, all, unfortunately, in transplant, they're baby steps. Yeah. Um, and you will have dips in the road and, and things, you know, won't go as quite as you want them to, but, but they will eventually. And, and eventually, the, you know, the the dips will get less and the good periods will get longer. And, and I think it's really important to remember that. It's very different to other types of treatment, even you know, before you have your transplant when you have chemotherapy and, you know, and other oncologies even. Yeah. Um, there's this very much up and down recovery. That's what recovery is, is up and down. Um, so I guess it's about just, you know, keep going. You know, it's very easy for me to say that, but it's that you are getting there. It just takes time. And I guess the other thing then is just to use the resources around you. So you know, speak to the members of your team at the transplant center, keep in touch with your nurses and the healthcare professionals, talk to your family members if you're struggling, you know, um, yeah. nearly all our patients will struggle at some point, you know, psychologically, that's really normal after transplant, we have to normalize that um, and get the help you need. And then use, you know, there are resources like, like us at Anti Nolan, you know, and what we do in our team, what we, you know, you can talk to us over the phone, we have resources online, we have booklets, you know, there's different formats we can access as well as providing emotional support, you know, our telephone emotional support service and the going back to work service. I think we have a really good, solid uh, bank of resources that you can access at any point in your recovery. You know, they're not all focused on early or or late. You can access them when you need them. And that's the other really important part is, you know, do it when you need it. Not everyone is the same. You might need psychological support at the beginning where someone else might need it 
at the end or you know in the middle so yeah pace yourself don't give yourself a hard time you know um and use use all the resources around you and include you know anti nolan and you know charity services because that's what we're here for yeah. we're here to support you and we're here to support your, your nurses and your doctors to support you that that's what we're here for and um you know i don't you know that that's really the, the best piece of advice i can give i think incredible and i think that's you know it's a very compassionate answer but it also does remind us to be you know if you are a patient to be compassionate with yourself and to get that help if you need it and know that yeah we are here you know patient services and nothing are here but also you know lean on your team ask the questions you know it's important that you feel better and that's what they're there for so um i think that's some really great advice from from you Healy. Last question, um, sadly, because I've been really enjoying this, you know, hearing all your reflections, is about the future. So, what are you looking forward to in the future for Anthony Nolan and Transplant? Um, well, I think uh, you know it's a really exciting time for our team. Um, you know, we're we've got the obviously new the new new lead nurse will be starting in June, um, and she'll be absolutely brilliant. I've no doubt about that at all. Um, and as well as the funding program, obviously that's, that's you know carrying on, and we're funding more posts this year. We're funding two nurses and two psychologists this year. Uh, we've also got the new adoption program that we've launched, um, where we adopt um, healthcare professionals that work in transplant. And so this can be any healthcare professional; it doesn't have to be nurses, psychologists. It can be physios, OTs, um, social workers, other nurses on the ward. You know, that's the, the point. Is we work with lots of different healthcare professionals. Um, so I think it's really exciting that this is a program that the, that you know we're going to launch and, and hopefully will grow and connect in with the you know the network that we already have and work with the funded posts. Um, and for us, we will learn more about what they do, which will then inform our team about what we need to do. You know, what where the gaps are, what can we do to support them to fill those gaps. Um, you know, potentially we could fund different posts. You know, in the future. You know, what we what we learn from you know um, other healthcare professionals um, so i think that's really exciting um uh, i also think there's a there's also a new focus within the team on research uh yeah. that which is new um obviously I, that was delayed last year because of covid but i think hopefully in the next year 18 months we can really move that forward and i think that'll be that again be brilliant because we're doing more work around we talk about quality of life you know patient experience outcomes um, you know, so it's a it's a it's a growing team. You know, it's um, it's an exciting place to work. It's uh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of potential. Um, so it is a it's a lovely job to come into um, with a really lovely team. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because you know you're part of the team, Claire, and, and you're sat right there. Um, I'm saying it because I mean it. You know, they are a brilliant team, very easy to work with. All of you, equally like the the healthcare professionals I work with, you're all very passionate about what you do. Um, and uh, I have no doubt at all that we'll go on to do, continue and go on to do more brilliant things. Um, yeah, that's what I think will, will happen. Amazing, amazing, Healy. And I feel like it's almost not enough to say thank you, to be honest. I feel like I wish there was another, you know, words or phrase to use. But honestly, thank you for being an incredible colleague to work with as well. And, you know, it is exceptional that you have come into our team as the first clinical nurse specialist, the first lead nurse, you know, what's up there in terms of your brain and your expertise is, is so invaluable and we can all learn so much from you from you know what you've provided to Anthony Nolan and I'm sure I'm not alone when I say you know thank you in terms of just being there and you know showing up for stem cell transplant patients and being so a part of something that's really you know special and can, will continue to be thanks to your hard work you know as you said the adopted post the funded post you know that is all going to roll on and that was part of your creation so um, yeah, and I'm going to miss you as well. That's a personal anecdote. It's not going to be, it's not going to be the same, but I know we'll see each other soon whenever it's safe. Oh, so cool. I look forward to seeing you as well. Thanks, Claire. That's very kind. Thank you, Healy.